So far we've fixed 10 out of 13 of the 20 broken Nintendo Switches. We've got six more to try. Let's take them apart. And here is number 14. The charge port on number 14 looks to be fine. So let's plug in the charger and see what kind of amperage we get. 0.18, nothing on the screen. Oh, it is, it's almost up to normal charging. And now it's back down. Hopefully this is not gonna be another water damage one. Let's open it up and find out. Now that we have all those screws out, we can pull off the metal plate. You think it's gonna be liquid damaged? I hope not. Hey, it looks good so far. We do have a good indicator. This will be pink if there's been liquid in here, at least down on this part, and I see none of it. So let's disconnect the battery and check out the capacitors. All right, here we go. Who thinks this one's gonna be shorted? I'm guessing yes. And it is. And that's the only one that's shorted. I'm guessing video chip, what do you think? So we've got to get all the rest of this off of the motherboard so we can get the motherboard out and replace that chip. We're gonna start with the heatsink. Now we got the motherboard out. We need to replace this chip, so we'll go do that and then bring it back and test it again. Now with that chip replaced, let's go ahead and recheck that capacitor. Trying to figure out how to get my meter in here. There we go. All right, let's see what we have. All right, good news. That capacitor is no longer shorted. Let's plug it into a good battery and a charger and see what we get. So we're at 0.41, normal slow charging, zero, and it goes up to 1.76. So that is great news. Now we just need to get it back into the switch and make sure the backlight and the screen works. And number 14 is all back together. Let's see if it shows up on the screen. So we got charging here and we do have a charging symbol here. This is great news. It seems like number 14 is fixed. We do have to fully charge it and fully test it. Let's move on to number 15. Number 15 without a doubt has a faulty charge port. So I'm gonna get that charge port replaced and then we'll test everything else. So the charge port has been replaced. I'll plug in a known good battery, but let's check the capacitors around these chips first. 
Okay, these are all normal. They short to ground to one side, but not the other. Good. Fuse is good. Coil's good. So, known good battery. And plug in the charger. Let's see what kind of readings we get. 0 0.40, that's good slow charging. Goes to zero and then to fast charging. Okay, this is good news. I'm gonna get it plugged back into the rest of the switch and then we'll see if we have a working screen. Okay, we know it charges. Let's see if we get anything on the screen. And there we go. So number 15 just needed the charge port replaced. Let's move on to number 16. The charge port on number 16 looks fine. So let's plug it in and see if it charges. 0.39. Okay, we've got a faulty screen. Let's see if we can get that screen to go again, just to make sure you guys saw it. All right, so watch the screen. There we go, faulty LCD. So number 16 just needs the LCD replaced. Let's get that done next. I'm gonna use this blue heat mat so I can heat up the adhesive around this digitizer right here. Anyone that doesn't know, there is kind of like a plastic, uh, sort of like a plastic plate and that's called the digitizer and that's what registers your touch when you touch the screen. So under the digitizer, there's adhesive that keeps it held down to the screen. So I'm gonna flip this over, get that nice and warm so I can get that off. Now, while the heat mat is hot, I'm going to remove this back cover and the metal plate so we can get the connectors disconnected. So in order to get the digitizer out, we'll need to disconnect this cable and this backlight cable. We'll need to take the card reader out so we can get this ribbon cable disconnected for the LCD. Now we have the game card reader out. Now we need to disconnect this one and this one. Ah, that's better. So there's out with the old one. Now we're gonna line this adhesive back up, make sure we get it in place where it needs to be. There we go. We'll reuse this adhesive since we're not putting a new digitizer on. Here is the new LCD. We're not gonna take the screen protector off yet. We're gonna bend this back and then we're also going to bend this connector down just a little bit, the ribbon cable. So it will go into place once we get it in there. And then same with the backlight cable. Now these can be kind of tricky to get in correctly. Let's see if we can do it. So here is the main ribbon cable. Let's try and get in there correctly. actually bent that too much, I think. It's not quite going in how I want. This is really difficult to show on camera very well. I'm sorry you can't, probably can't see as well as I wish you could. There we go. Backlight ribbon cable, and then the ribbon cable for the LCD. Okay. Now we need to set this in here all the way. There we go. And with that all in there correctly, 
we're going to remove the plastic protector. Just like that. Then we're going to put the digitizer back on. Just like this. But before we flop it down into place, I'm going to make sure there's no dust under the screen. I'm just going to use some canned air for that. And there we go. So this digitizer is pretty dirty, so we'll have to clean that up to really make sure there's not any dust under there. But we have the LCD replaced. Now I'm gonna heat this heat mat back up just to make sure that adhesive sets nicely and then we'll put it all back together. Now while that's warming up, I'm gonna start getting these cables plugged back in where they go. That's about hot enough. I usually will also put some pressure on it like this just to make sure that it's got pressure on it. Sometimes I actually stack some heavy stuff on the back of it for a few minutes. Now we'll put the game slot back in. Connect the ribbon cable for the digitizer. Now, after those are connected, we need to let it cool down a little bit. If it's too hot, the switch will recognize that it's too hot and it'll shut itself down. So we need to give it a few minutes just to make sure everything's nice and cool and then we can turn it on and test it. So we have it cooled down. Let's plug it in and see what we get on the screen. Okay, there we go. That's what we're looking for. Now I've got to let it charge up so then we can test the screen further and make sure the full LCD works. So far, it looks great though. Actually, instead of letting it charge up all the way, let's plug in a known good battery just so then we can get it tested more right now. All right, here we go, let's see what it does. That looks great. All right. And the screen looks great. And as with the other Nintendo Switches, I'll need to test this more off camera, but the LCD is working great. That's getting to be a nice stack of fixed switches. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 out of 20 so far. We've got four more to go. Do you think we can fix the last four? This has been a great lot of switches so far. We've had a few liquid damaged ones, a few that were fixable, a few that weren't, but overall it's been really good. Wish me luck on the last four. Here we go with number 17. So taking a look at the port, the port looks fine. Let's see if it powers on. Doesn't power on, which is to be expected. Let's plug it in and see what readings we get. Zero, zero. We don't get anything. Oh, here we go. Okay, we actually get charging symbol now. Makes me wonder if maybe the port's just a little dirty. And same thing the other way. So this one shows normal slow charging. I need to leave it on a charger for a little while and see if it ever turns on or if it just keeps slow charging. If it does, that would indicate a possible battery problem. So I'm gonna leave it on this charger for a long time and see what happens. And then I'll update you guys once I know. Okay, for number 17, it just stays on slow charging. I left it on overnight and it just slow charges. It never goes to fast charging. Usually that indicates a battery problem. So let's put a known good battery in and see what happens. Good news is that there is no liquid damage anywhere in here. So we know that's not a problem. So we'll put in this known good battery and then we'll see if it fast charges. You can even see if it turns on while we're at it. Okay, that looks great. Okay, everything looks fine there. Let's see if it fast charges. Yep, there we go. So number 17 just needs a new battery. I'm gonna get that replaced next and then we'll move on to number 18. Once again, all of the parts and tools I use are linked in my Amazon shop in the description. I do receive a small commission when you purchase from that link, so I do appreciate it. 
helps me keep this channel going and helps me buy lots more broken junk. So we've got this battery here. Now we just need to get this one out, replace the foam from here over to here, and then get it put in the switch. I'm going to also put some adhesive strips on the back so it will stick down and not rattle around in there. Now we have our old battery out. We're gonna take the backing off of this tape right here to make sure that it sticks good. There we go. Got that and got this. Okay. Just gonna line this up like that. There we go. Now we'll get this foam backing off. And there we go. It's definitely not the prettiest, but that'll work just fine for what we need it for. Now you always wanna make sure you check this pink thermal paste. This thermal paste is nice and wet still. It's not dried up. I can move it around with my fingers. It, it makes like these peaks when I tap on it with my fingers. So this thermal paste is just fine. So we're gonna reuse that and put the back on. Then the other back on and then it'll be ready to go. We have both back plates on. Let's turn it on and just double check that it works. Okay, there we go. And there we go. And we got the dashboard. Double check and make sure it charges. And it charges normally too. So number 17 is fixed. Let's move on to number 18. Okay, number 18, let's see if it turns on. Definitely doesn't turn on. Oh, gotta check the charge port. Really hard to see in there. It looks like maybe we have some sort of corrosion in there. So that's not good news. We might have more liquid damage. I'm gonna get the back off and then the metal plate and see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, what do you think? Is there gonna be liquid damage? Please no liquid damage. And no liquid damage. Hey, that's great news. Since there's no liquid damage, but it looks like there is some sort of debris or the USB-C port is dirty, I am gonna disconnect the battery and then clean all the pins on the USB-C port just to see if I can get them all clean so the port is working again. I'm also gonna test the capacitors around the chips to see if any of those are shorted while I've got the back off. Let's actually do the testing first, just so then we know, we know where we stand on it. Okay, we got a short there. All right, we've just got this one short. So I'm gonna get this whole motherboard out so we can turn it over and check the video chip as that's usually what causes this short. And then we'll get that replaced and clean the USB-C port while I'm at it. Here we go, so these ones are always interesting. I received quite a few of these where I replaced the video chip and the video chip actually has a burned trace right here that is connected to this first filter right here. I'm not sure why it does that. Obviously there's a lot of current that goes through there. I'm guessing maybe when the pins on the USB-C port short or possibly when you're using a third party charger or something like that. I don't totally know, but I received quite a few that have this marking right here that show the chip has actually burned right there. So we definitely have a problem with the video chip. Do you guys wanna see me replace another one of those? I've replaced so many of those in this lot. I'm gonna show the replacement of this video chip on camera because this one's actually a little bit more interesting. When I remove the chip and place the new chip, I actually have to run a little bit of a trace wire to fix the burn circuit on the motherboard. You'll see what I mean when I get to the footage. Let's take a look at that now.
We've got that video chip replaced. I did have to run that jumper wire from the chip to the filter. Normally, I just have my meter right up there so I can check and make sure there is good continuity from the pin on the chip to the other side of the filter. I forgot to bring it up there, so let's test it now, and then we'll test those capacitors and see if they're still shorts. So I'm going to go from this side of the filter to the pin on the chip. Okay, great news. Now let's check and see if this capacitor is shorted. It is not. This is the capacitor that was shorted before we did the work. And it is not shorted anymore. Just do a quick check of the others. Okay, those all look good. So hopefully that's all it took to fix this one. I'm gonna get it put back in and then we can test it. Also, I do need to clean this port, so I'm gonna do that right now before I forget, just to get it nice and clean so we can check the charging once it's together. So I lots of times just take a pick and get any of the bigger stuff, if there's any big chunks of anything on the port. I'll get that off with a pick. And then after I'm done with that, I'll go through with sometimes like a toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol. All right, that should do for now. Let's finish getting it put back together. Okay, we've got it together enough to test it. Get this battery plugged back in. And here we go. 0.38, but do we have anything on the screen? Yes, we do. Yes! So that is number 18. We've only got two more to fix. Let's check out number 19. Number 19. Port looks good on number 19. Does not power on. Let's see what happens when I plug in the charger. 0 0.21, 0 0.29. Okay, let's take number 19 apart. All right, the good news is there is no liquid damage. Let's disconnect the battery and let's test the capacitors. Let's see if we've got another faulty video chip. Eh, probably. So we have another faulty video chip. This one I'm not gonna show on camera, so I'm just gonna cut to having it fixed, and then we'll go from there. All right, video chip has been replaced. Let's check and see if it's still shorted. Nope. Let's check and make sure this capacitor looks good back here. Yep, looks normal. All right, everything looks good. Now I'm gonna get this put back in the switch. Then we'll try to charge it and see what it does. We have it back together enough to test. Let's see if it charges. There we go. We've got a charge indicator on the screen. So it looks like number 18 is fixed. Now, obviously, I do have to do a lot more testing on all of these consoles. I need to test the Joy-Cons, I need to test the Wi-Fi, I need to test the game slots and the SD slots and all of that sort of stuff. This is just a basic check to see if what I did has worked so far. I also do need to charge them and make sure all the batteries work correctly. But for this basic test after the repair, it looks good so far. So far, we're at 16 out of 20. We've got one more to do. Do you think I'll be able to fix the last one? Also, the other thing too is we do have number 12 that actually has a good motherboard. I just haven't gotten another case that has a bad motherboard to swap this into. So, so far, we've actually fixed one more. It's just a matter of finding a case for us to put it into. Now, number 20 has some problems. So this one I actually had to cannibalize because I needed the case for a customer repair. So I took the case and just have the motherboard. But let's take a look at the motherboard and just see if we can figure out what's wrong with it just by doing some tests on the motherboard. So here we go. Let's start by checking the charge port. And from what I can tell, the charge port looks fine. Let's check the capacitors for shorts. Yep, 
Wow, no shorts so far. Everything tests good so far on number 20. So let's plug in a known good battery and then plug in the charger and see if it charges normally. Oh. So this goes blank. Usually when that goes blank, it means that there's messed up pins on the charge port. So let's double check that. That's kind of a weird one. We looked at it. I looked at it pretty good. It's really hard to tell, but there is a shiny piece right there. That's where one of the pins has been pushed up. So this charge port actually needs to be replaced. I think maybe the charge port might be the only problem on this. So I'm going to get that fixed and then we'll test it again and see if that's the only problem. Now we've got our new USB-C charge port in. Let's test it and see if it charges normally. Let's plug it in, see what happens. 0.41, there we go, we got slow charging. Let's see if it goes to zero and then fast charges. Zero, come on, yeah! And we have number 20, at least the motherboard of number 20, working good. So we've got two extra motherboards that are working, but we don't have the cases to put them in yet. So out of the 20, Nintendo Switches that I bought. We fixed 16 along with two good motherboards from those. So we have a total of 18 good motherboards, 16 full switches. As I've said multiple times, I do need to go through and retest all of these and test them with the controllers and make sure they connect to the internet and all of that sort of a thing. So I will do that off camera. That would be an incredibly boring video and I can't imagine any of you guys want to see it. So I'm going to do that off camera, but so far this is looking great. Now let's look at the numbers. I paid $1,815 for these 20 broken switches. These are the parts I used and the price that I get them for. I do buy them in bulk from China, so these prices will likely be a lot less than what you can find on eBay, at least for some of them. The average sale price most likely for these switches is gonna be $170. There's gonna be some that are in really good condition that I'll get more for and a few that I'll get a little bit less for. Now this number of fixable switches 16 is probably the number that I'm gonna have. I can't guarantee that as I don't have them all tested quite yet, but I also don't want this video to drag on, so I'm gonna put 16 as the probable number. Remember, we do have two more good motherboards that I'll be able to swap into good cases once I have those, so I actually have more than this, but we're just gonna leave it at 16 because some of these 16 might also not be fully fixable or they might partially work or something like that. So we're gonna leave that at that. Parts cost is $77.50. And then if we take the $1,815 out of this price, we're left with a profit of $827.50. That's definitely not a bad profit for a few hours of work, but the final numbers won't be in for probably a few weeks or a month as I usually put these up on my website, tronicsfixstore.com. If you're interested in keeping up with these numbers and seeing the final profit on this lot of 20 broken switches, I will keep you guys updated on my Instagram. That's at tronicsfix. So feel free to check that out if you want, if you want to stay updated on these numbers. Also, be sure to subscribe. I'm already collecting PS4s for a broken lot of PS4s video, so you might want to subscribe so you can be sure to get notified about that. Thank you so much for watching the series and supporting me on my channel, and I hope you have a good day.